Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we're going to learn about IGCSE Computer Science Chapter 6, Automated System and Emerging Technologies, which basically covers the current trend or in the computer science field. So this chapter can be subdivided into multiple different topics, so such as the automated system, we'll start off with that and proceed to robotic. And lastly, we will cover um, it all up with artificial intelligence, which can be further branched out to expert system and machine learning. So let us first start with automated system. And the definition of it is that it is a combination of software and hardware that is designed and programmed to work. Look at this keyword, automatically, without the need of any human intervention. So as compared to the hardware devices that we learned in chapter three, Automated system is a computer that doesn't require human intervention. So for instance, um, I'm using this stylus here. It is an input device and I use it to interact with my iPad. So in other words, I need to adjust this manually to write something on my iPad. So this is not automatic. Automated system work in a way that doesn't require a human to do anything. So there are three hardware components that are important to allow automated system work. So first of all, we have the sensor, which is also known as the automated input. It's an input device that takes the reading from the surrounding um, and then it will send data to the microprocessor. Before we talk about microprocessor, just a note here is that every value that is captured by the sensor, if it is an analog data, such as temperature, um, density, it will first need to be converted into digital formats, which means it needs to be converted into 0 to one, 0 and 1 because binary is the only language that the computer can understand. All right. So the second component that is needed is called the microprocessor. So this microprocessor, it will pr process the input from the sensors. And if necessary, it will send instruction to other components such as actuator. It is basically a middleman that process the data sent by the input device, the sensors, before deciding to do anything with it. All right. So third component, which is important, is the actuator. It turns the electrical signals from the microprocessor to output such as movement, All right, turning on a valve, rotate a steering wheel. It still kind of sounds abstract to explain it in this way. So I figured that I better explain some of the applications of automated system to help you get a glimpse of how this is useful in the real world. So there are seven applications, um, which is not exhaustive, but apparently in, in our syllabus, we only covered seven. So the first application of the automated system is transport, such as autonomous car. Know that I have underlined the three components that are important in the system, such as um, we have sensors here, actuators, and microprocessors, all right? So for autonomous car, like the one that is launched by Tesla, how it works is that they use a sensors attached to the car to act as an eye and ear for the car to detect what is happening um, around, surround, in the surrounding, and then the sensor will then send all this data to the microprocessors to know what to perform next. And then the actuator will then perform the following depending on what is being detected by the sensors. Okay. So here are some of the disadvantages and disadvantages. Um, when we learn all this thing, we need to know that they, they are good. They are good technologies, but there is also certain risks involved in using them. For, for instance, the advantages of an autonomous car would be it is a lot safer because the microprocessor can calculate exactly how much you have to turn the steering wheel or how much you need to accelerate. And it's also better for environment because vehicles will operate more efficiently. There wouldn't be um, fuel wastage. But there's also some disadvantages associated to this. For first of all, it's um, quite expensive because it involves computers and also the ever-present fear of hacking into the vehicle control system. Just imagine that the hacker hack into your car's computer 
and it just do whatever that it's not supposed to do, and it's kind of、um, causes some、um, criminal activity. So here are some of the advantages and disadvantages of using automated system in the transport industry. So、um, next up, we also learned that automated system is also used in agriculture, such as automated harvesting of crops. So the sensors could detect what is the optimal times for harvesting based on factors such as weather condition. Um. So what is how is this different from human? Is that we human tend to make mistakes. We tend to make wrong judgment, but computer is a lot more accurate in it. That they can, in the long term, it could benefit this human by making less errors. And then the microprocessors will using the value from the sensors determine where. Exactly, should you do the harvest things, and the actuator will will be used to carry out the extraction of goods from the ground. So, um, here are some advantage, tages and disadvantages, which is um, the delivery of chemicals can be, as I said, machines are very accurate. Everything is works according to a formula, so they know exactly how much pesticide and fertilizers to be used, and this ensures that. The farming can sub can be successful, and some of the disadvantages that it result in fewer job opportunities because when you use automated system in your farm, you wouldn't need to hire so many people, right? So, the third application of automated system is weather forecasting. It helps to especially in the airports to predict poor flying and landing conditions. So sensors again very much like the agriculture it checks for. Potentially dangerous weather. They measure the humidity. They measure the wind speed, and these data will then be sent to the microprocessor to issue relevant warnings. As a result of get data gathered, and actuators can be used to activate emergency systems such as lightning and wherever required. So,、um, advantage is that information about the overhead weather condition is constantly fed to air con traffic controllers because. Um, weather can be different seconds to seconds, so it's better that we detect them earlier and faster instead of using human. And prediction can some of the disadvantage is that it can be inaccurate, especially if snow is forecast and it ultimately doesn't arrive. All right. So the fourth application of automated system is gaming. So basically, um. Let's say sensors here are built into the game environments where characters interact with human controllers, and then sensors, microprocessors will use this data to determine game outcome and decision. Actuators are activated in controller to give haptic feedback such as vibration. If you look at the current PS Five controllers, it actually has something called the adaptive touch, which means it provides different senses. It stimulate your senses. Um. When the game is in different phases, all right. So the advantage is that the depth of gaming challenges increase with computer-generated opponents and behave in a more human way, and the disadvantage is that it decreases real social interaction with other human. So this is、uh, a a bit like disadvantage of gaming than the automated system, all right. So、um, the fifth application is the lightning.、Um, we discussed this in. Chapter three point six. When we talk about sensors, the sensors basically basically detects how much light is there in the surrounding, and the microprocessor run routine based on human requirements. So this is the keyword here. When the microprocessor process this data, um, the rule that they use is actually determined by us human, which means they are they could be a bunch of code written by programmers to tell the microprocessor what are the conditions for this action to be launched. All right, so that's another note. And then, after the microprocessor processes the data, it will send the signal to actuator to activate certain home equipment, turn on the light, and so. So the advantage is that system can be taught to react to environmental factors such as switching light on and off when the conditions are correct. And also, it can become complex because it's not like traditional speech, and these light bulbs. Um, the smart bulb can also be expensive to maintain, so not everyone needs it. Not everyone needs these high tech stuff. Therefore, um, it could they could save some money if they don't use it. So, um, 
followed by science, the last application, automated laboratory experiments. I personally have not used it, but what they say here is that um, how it works is sensors detect changes in the environmental conditions such as humidity and microprocessor will then calculate how many alterations need to be applied to the experimental settings. Then the actuator can do things according to the rules such as turning on the heater, cooler and water supplies as required. So the advantage of um, using automated system in science in experimental settings is that more experiments can be repeated and reading of data can take place when the human carry out tests um, test manually, which means it can be repeated at a faster speed because everything is automated. But here is the disadvantage is that if something goes wrong, it can be several hours before this is discovered, which could ruin any result um, collected because a human is not there and the computer is not smart enough to detect if something goes wrong. So this is all about automated system. It basically consists of three important components such as the sensors, microprocessors, and actuator. And we also learn about the various applications of, um, of it in the real world. So next up, we are going to look into robotics. All right. Um, robotic is a little bit different as compared to automated system. So let's look at what robotic actually is. So robota in the SAS language, which means forced labor, just some fun fact about the origin of how the word robot comes up. So the definition of robot, robotic means the design, here they said, constructions and operation of robots that are used to enhance our working and personal life. So here, um, I will explain the three characteristics of a robot and then having learned these three characteristics, we'll be able to know whether an object or a technology is considered robotic or not. So first of all, a robot will have electrical components, such as the one that we learned just now in automated system, the sensors, a microprocessor, and actuator. In other words, robots, they are part of automated system, but not all automated systems are robots. So um, again, sensor sense the surrounding microprocessor process the data and actuator do the work. And second thing about robot is that it will have mechanical structure. So it should be a machinery that has a movable part. They can make use of wheels, cogs, piston gears to carry out functions such as turning, twisting, moving backwards and forward, gripping out, lifting. Um, I know it's a little bit hard to understand how, what a mechanical structure is. Um, you definitely learn more um, in the next few minutes when we talk about uh, a robot in factories and the application of it. So the third characteristic of a robot is that it is also programmable, which means we can insert codes into these robots to tell them to, to teach them the rule of handling the input data. All right. So these robots basically have a controller. They act as a brain to determine the action to be taken to perform a certain task. And this controller is just like the human brain, it requires input data. Um, and, but these controllers are programmable to allow the robots to do certain tasks. So here we have a quiz here. Based on the definition of a robot, do you think that a chatbot is a robot? So the three um, characteristics of a robot is that it has electrical components, mechanical structure, which means it, it has to be a machinery and it's also programmable. Then is a chatbot, is a chatbot, okay, you, you all see the answer, is a chatbot a robot? The answer is no, because a chatbot that we use day to day, they don't, don't have any mechanical structure, all right? So these are also known as the software robot they are different compared to hardware robots in the sense that they don't have any machineries. And here, what they say is that software robots are not robots as they don't have the above characteristic. So um, additional knowledge here is that we have two different types of robots. One is called the independent robots, 
which means they are pretty much independent and don't require human to control them, such as an autonomous vehicle. You know, in an autonomous bus, obviously you don't need a bus driver, right? And as for dependent robot, is they have a human who is interfacing directly with the robot, all right? Which means human control the robot. So um, to again, just like automated system, to explain better the how useful robotic is, um, I have a few pictures to show the applications of robotics in the real world. In the industry, so um, if you look here, this is a robot in the car industry, car factory, all right? Um, so this is one of the usage. Instead of human assembling the car, they actually, the car owner purchased all this machinery to do the work. And the advantage of it is that the robot can work in a condition that may be hazardous to humans. They don't need, you know, good aircon, good environment. They can work in any environment, basically. And they can work all the time without the need to stop. They can carry it out. They don't need rest. However, disadvantage, just like what we mentioned just now, robot can also lead to higher unemployment amongst manual labor tasks because they essentially can do what humans can do. And also there's a risk of descaling when robot take over certain tasks, which means humans don't actually know how to do this thing anymore because they are all done by human. I mean, they are all done by a robot. So this is one application of robotic in industry. Let's look at um, the transport. Um, we talk about this in automated system. The autonomous car, for, for instance, in Tesla, and also the rovers that, are, that is currently on Mars. So these are how um, robotics is used in the transport system. Um, the advantage is that it's safer and better for the environment, but they are they can also be very expensive to set up. All right. Also, the ever present fear, basically the same thing that we talk about in automated system. So in agriculture, so if you look at this robot here, they are harvesting. So instead of um, I don't really see human here in this picture. Everything is operated by a robot. So they can replace slow and repetitive tasks to allow farmers to concentrate on how to improve production yield. So one thing I want all of you to understand here is that even though robotics seem to have taken some of the human tasks, one of the advantage of having all this automated system and robotics is that they free up time for us humans to think about the the creative part of the business and also the the task because if you think about it all these things are repetitive and they are pretty boring and don't require a creative mind to harvest so if we delegate all these tasks to the robot we can have the additional time to think about um new invention to be more innovative so this is some of the advantage that you should um think about when we talk about um, automated system and robotic. So um, the advantage is that they are very accurate in terms of delivering the chemical. And again, what I said, disadvantage, fewer job opportunities. So um, next up in medicine, medicine, so here they said robots can also be used in surgery. I couldn't find a picture on it, but what they do is that um, these robotics are used to monitor vital life data in research and development such as tissue engineering, all right, such and such. And they can also take blood samples from the patient. It is less painful. Um, what they say here is that robot can spot um, vein better, perhaps sometimes better than human, so that the patients can, be, um, can feel less pain. And the advantage is that surgery can take less time, which improve the chances of recovery for the patient. And the disadvantage, again, is that it is expensive. So last but not least in domestic, which is how the robotic is used in our home, right? So like um, we have vacuum cleaner and land movers. So um, this is a vacuum cleaner, the image here. So if you have a vacuum cleaner at home, you basically don't have to do work. You can delegate it to them, all right? The advantage is that robots can quickly learn the environment whether there's dust in front of them or in the room, and they can be programmed to work at convenient time. And 
disadvantage they can encourage a little sedentary lifestyle which means um you just sit down all the day and not do any work so entertainment um for for now oh robotic is also used in the film industry so this is one of the youtuber that i like a lot called mkbhd um he has this video about how robotic takes over his filming process so um the advantage of it is that film can be presented in a way that human would not be able to normally see due to robotic technologies again fewer job opportunities you don't need photographer anymore and human are increasingly replaced by machinery so um i have a past year question here which asks about robots so if they are if we do ask you this question two other characteristic of a robot remember a robot has to have machinery structure electrical components they have to be programmable so these are the three things that we know and also they ask two advantages of using robots um again it is more accurate and it's safer so if you look at the marking scheme so these are the answers that you can write in if you are uh, you face these problems in your igcx day exam so that's the end of it so so next up we are going to learn about artificial intelligence so which is one of the hot topic in the computer science field but before we look into what ai is let's first define it um, the definition of ai is a branch of computer science dealing with the simulation of intelligent human behavior by a computer the keyword here is simulation essentially ai aims to instill the human intelligence into a computer what is exactly intelligence if you search up google you will get this answer is the ability to think to learn from experience to solve problems and to adapt to new situations and ai aims to have the computer learn all these things so another way to explain it is that um, we can look at how human behavior um, works so for instance if you are planning out a hangout with your friends this could be your thought process all right so you might ask okay who is going with us and what's their hobbies okay and then you ask further questions to know where to plan the hangout and who to go out with so when we talk about artificial intelligence we basically want the computer to have all these thoughts process inside their memory all right so we are essentially instilling our thought process into a machine so first of all let's look at how an ai reason based on the data they receive how do we instill such intelligence into a computer which is a non-living things so um, I've outlined three methods here based on the textbook. First of all, is that they draw a reason conclusion based on a given data. Here I have an X, Y axis on the relationship between the square feet of a house and also its price. And each point here is a data point, a data point. I, I need to use another color, a data point. So let's say we want the computer to predict the price of a house based on the square meter attribute so, um, we have we have um, the data here which is the house is around 800 square feet and using the data here other data the historical data we can actually predict how much would this house cost in other words the computer can do the same too too um, even though it's out of a syllabus, I just mentioned it here. Um, this method is called linear regression. It's a, mo a model in machine learning that basically draws a line of best fit based on the existing data. And then using this line, we are able to predict how, for instance, in this case, we are able to predict the price of the house based on the square meter. So the first method that AI used to do reasoning is based on the given data historical data so um, however not everything can be predicted using past data so sometimes they do need to learn some rules so uh, in this case um, I, I draw this example here 
how do we detect someone has COVID positive? Basically, we ask questions like, does he cough? Does he has fever? Does he has close contact? All right. So just like how we can think in this way, we can teach the machine to think in this way too. So we can teach them to ask certain question, as I will show in the example later um, in a sentence detection system. By teaching machine how to learn all these rules, it will be able to predict whether um, a person has this disease or not, and also in many other applications. So we basically are teach them certain rules. So next of all, next up, AI can also quickly discern patterns like us human and then make predictions by adapting to the new data. So for instance, this is your um, the bank account input for, for a certain month. So if out of nowhere, um, maybe next week, the transaction exceeds the, the normal average, the computer will be able to detect it based on the historical data and inform the company that, hey, something is not so wrong, maybe the bank, all right? We can teach the AI to discern certain pattern based on historical data. So here are the three methods, all right? So there are two different branches of artificial intelligence. The first one is expert system, and the second one is machine learning. Let's just first look at expert system. Expert system is basically a computer system that mimics the decision-making ability of a human. So it simulates the judgment and behavior of a human or organization that has expert knowledge and experience. So one type of expert that I believe everyone knows is doctor. Um, when you see the doctor, you just tell them what is the symptoms and using their medical knowledge, they will be able to tell you what disease you have. So what computer scientists has come up with is the ability to teach the computer this knowledge and then ask the computer to use this knowledge to act like an expert. So let's look at, um, I have opened up a page called Symptoms Tracker, which is an example of expert system here. Basically, you just have to type out all your symptoms, just like how you would tell doctor your symptoms, and they will tell you what are the possible diseases that you have. So let's try it out. Um, let's say I have fever. So yeah, fever is one. Cough. And what else? Um, dire. Okay. Um, cardia. Okay, I just simply type in some of the symptoms. I don't understand what they are, but um, I'm a male. My age is this category, and I'm from Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia. So having submitted all these things, um, when I click the submit button, oh man. And this symptom checkers will show me all the diseases that has that I might have, all right, lung cancer, influenza, bronchitis, and I, I can even look up more on this um, symptoms. So reflex, so these are all the things that I might have based on the symptoms I submitted. So feel free to try, try that out yourself. I will um, include the link in the video description. So let's continue on the structure of an expert system. First of all, just like the app that we see just now, Every expert system should have a user interface, which acts as an interface for um, human to interact with the expert system so that we can use them. And it also should also have something called a knowledge base in which I store all the knowledge about an area of expertise obtained from a number of expert sources. So for the symptom checkers that we use just now, the knowledge could be the medical knowledge done by medical researchers, all right? So, for rule base, it should also has certain rules used by the inference engine to draw a conclusion. For instance, in the patient checker, symptom checker that we used just now, they could have rules like if you have this sentence and this sentence together, you would yeah, possibly having these disease. So we also should have the inference engine, which is the 
part of the expert system that makes decision based on what they have from the knowledge and the rule base and produce a possible solutions to a problem. So last but not least is the explanation system. All right. So the expert system can make all the possible guesses, but it, if it fails to it communicate with, it, with the user, then it doesn't really have any usage. So the explanation system could suggest certain actions for the user to take. Um, it could also provide the accuracy of its prediction. So for instance, instead of saying you might have COVID, it's quite vague to say something like that. The computer system can say something like you have a 75% chances of getting COVID-19. So that's the explanation system part from an expert system. So these are the five components of an expert system. Remember this. So here are the example for medical diagnosis. Knowledge base could be a library of symptoms relation to disease. And if they have multiple symptoms, suggest disease, this is done by the rule base. And also suggest possible disease and action steps, explanation system. And for scheduling delivering service like your Amazon, Shopee, how do they decide which route to take? So the knowledge base could be the number of route, parcel and delivery points. So rule base could be if there's a traffic jam, don't pick that route. Explanation system suggests the best route to take. Diagnosis of breast cancer, uh, mammography with all types of cancers and normal mammography. Um, this is uh, in fact one of my final year project in university in which we collect a bunch of mammograms and then use that to train our models to decide whether a new input has the new mammogram is a cancel image or a non-cancel image. So rule base if you watch spots I observe categorized as cancel, predict probability. So this is some of the image that um, we can feed into the system. So other examples of expert systems here I have a list here you can feel free to have a read like bank loan approval system, mineral prospecting. So instead of having an expert doing all these things to us, we train the computer to become an expert to help us to do so. So here are some of the advantages and disadvantages of expert system. They are have high level of expertise, high accuracy, consistent result because they don't involve emotions and have the ability to store vast amount of ideas and facts. You just increase the hard drive. They have very fast response time. The disadvantage would be the setup and maintenance costs. Again, it's all about money. They are only as good as the information entered into the system. So that's the advantages and disadvantages. So let's look at the second category of artificial intelligence, which is called um, machine learning. It's a little bit different as compared to expert system because they don't have a lot of rules. Instead, they use data points to create models and using that models and a result can be predicted. So let me give you the definition before I explain. So machine learning is the science of training computers with sample data, with sample data so that they can go on to make predictions about new unseen data without the need to specifically program them for the new data. So algorithms are trained and learned from their past experiences and examples they don't need to be specifically programmed. This is the key part. They don't need, of course they need certain programming, but they don't need rule-based programming like if I was and stuff. This is the key. And they can make predictions about new unseen data. And an example would be how the email company like Google, they can create an app that automatically classified an email into spam. So we have this email here, blah, 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 congratulations. All right, how do we teach the machine that this email here is a spam email? We can't have rules like, oh, if they have this word million in it, then they have, they are considered spam. It's very hard to come up with rules that are able to classify all the spam email. So the intelligent computer scientists come up with a way that teach the computer how to do this. So first of all, a machine learning algorithm collects data about email. All right. 
they carried out a cleaning process to remove the stop word. For instance, if this is the email that you receive here, all right, you receive this, this is the original email, they will, they will first remove, it's called um, remove the stop words, which means the frequently appear word like the and an a because they don't contribute, they can't help us to determine whether an email is spam or not. And after that, these words that are frequently used in email that could indicate the incoming email is very likely to be spam. So what they're saying here is that they collect data about all the words that appear frequently in a spam email. And then using the data, the machine learning model is built and a training data set is used to train the model and make it using past emails known to be spam, which means they take in thousands and millions of spam emails and using the information, they tr kind of train the computer to know when to categorize an email as a spam email and when to classify it as, as a normal email. So when it's, it is evaluated, the model is fine-tuned and tested live. And it's pretty hard to explain it in simple terms, but just remember that the term machine learning means we give the machine a tons of data so that once they have enough data set, they will be able to use the data set. They will learn themselves what is the rule for spam email and non-spam. And by using the knowledge, the machine can learn how to categorize emails in spam and not spam. So another application of machine learning, there are tons of them, but one of them is AutoTag and a photograph. I believe it's also available in Apple photo library in which they will AutoTag a person by recognizing faces and suggest a name, suggest a name. Because how it works is that they look at all your photos in your library and then they try to identify the similar faces. And this is how auto tag work. Um, the other example, example that is very impressive is called AlphaGo. They basically create an, a machine learning algorithm that knows how to play the chess game Go. And again, how it works is that they just feed the algorithm tons of matches on tons of Go matches, and the machine will then use the knowledge to know what is the best move given a certain scenario. In fact, this AlphaGo machine even beats the world champion Lissado in, in the match. All right, I will link this documentary in the description below to help you understand better what is machine learning. So um, here's the difference between expert system and machine learning. That expert system here, they are rule-based system, which means they um, functions by having many, many rules, while modern machine learning are based on statistical modeling of data. So they could be using um, different machine learning models such as linear regression, regression, um, decision tree. So these are some of the machine learning models that are used by machine learning engineer. In fact, there's a course to teach all about that um, from Andrew Ng in Stanford University. If you're interested, you can check it out. So in other words, we can say that expert system use a lot of if then statement. If they, this data, um, if this scenario happens, then I suggest this outcome. Whereas the machine learning system projects the input into some model spaces. They create different machine learning model and by using the model, they predict the outcome for a given scenario. So that's the end of it. Um, we learned in artificial intelligence that is expert system and also the machine learning and how they two work together. This is a relatively brief session. If you wish to know more, I definitely recommend you to search up YouTube or Coursera to learn in depth how these machine learning models work. In fact, they are very interesting and very complicated. So that's the end of this video and this chapter. I hope you learned something and thank you for watching. Goodbye, everyone.